So I'm here with Rong Chen, co-founder of Elastos. Rong, how's it going? It's great to see you again. <laughs> nice to see you. I, well, it's been great. That's the project's like coming along. Oh, perfect. Well, listen, tell us more a little bit about Elastos itself, and then we'll jump into the new updates that have been going on. So I know you guys have been super busy. Yeah, we are. Actually, uh, we just recently released our uh, uh, year-end report, the half-year uh, financial auditing. And uh, as of today, this noon, we updated uh, the new website, elastos.org, and also uh, the Teams page. That's what we like to hear. So what's been new for the Elastos team? So I know you guys have been super busy. Yeah, because uh, we are actually uh, looking forward to going on the next uh, phase of the project. We expect to, uh, in April, by before the end of April, right? Uh, less than, uh, a bit more than a month. We are going to release the new uh, internet, new uh, autonomous running, uh, decentralized web. Very, very rough. Very, you know, it's not uh, something as smooth as the WWW, right? Because if you think of um, the early 90s, or actually, uh, the WWW web just celebrated uh, its 30th anniversary. Wow. 30 years ago, uh, Tim Berners-Lee invented uh, the WWW web. And uh, so this April, we, uh, we are excited to say that we're going to have uh, the next incarnation of the web. We call it uh, Smart Web. And why is that so important, Rong, for that to develop and grow? Actually, if you look at the web, the web is really, really, you know, has helped a lot, right? Um, made uh, all the virtual economies uh, available. For example, Google, Amazon, and uh, Facebooks, and, and, and etc. But then there's also drawbacks for the web. For example, WWW web is uh, decentralized because no government, no company should control the web. Yeah. Yet, the web has no IDs, so then a lot of people fake other people's IDs and launch uh, DDoS attacks <laughs> and steal other people's information, you know, pretend uh, to be uh, someone else, right? And uh, if millions of them pr pretend to be someone else, so they launch attacks and uh, to steal other people's uh, uh, data. Then if you see the trend for WWW um, because of the the viruses, the, uh, the fake identities, yeah. uh, all the criminal behaviors uh, going on. So uh, the consumers are so confused now. So they have to resort to uh, Google.com for IDs, Apple, right? Uh, Alibaba, Tencent. Because yeah. uh, basically they're seeking big brothers uh, for support, uh, for protection. Can we go back to this decentralized world, yet uh, it's secure? and uh, people can build trust each other, right? They can do business with each other. So that's why this is really, really uh, uh, important. Well, we've seen massive applications on the internet so far. As you mentioned, Google, Facebook, uh, Tencent, and everything they've been doing in China. What do you foresee coming in the next 10 years? Well, even though people think, you know, those uh, big uh, brothers, right? They're invincible, right? right. They're, they're just a superpower. But on the other hand, if, uh, from a computer science point of view, um, if you see the last web, URL point to a web page. What's in circulation on social networks? Photos, websites, uh, texts. Yeah. They're all data, yeah. right? But then if you see the trend where we're going, uh, Google has this instant app or uh, Tencent has something called uh, mini app. We basically, they have this uh, mini app built in inside WeChat. They have macro websites built inside the WeChat app. So in a way, WeChat is the a new app, you know, running uh, mini programs and uh, macro websites. But then it's controlled by one company, right? It's not shared among the people of the consumer of the world. Uh, but then, on the other hand, so we, that, that's why I name it uh, Smart Web, Elasso Smart Web. Smart Web meaning, meaning, meaning the web that runs apps versus the web that shares data. Right. So then, why it's that important to have apps shared, right? So when you share apps, first uh, problem you run into is uh, viruses. The, of course, the app has to run. If the apps can cannot be quarantined, it's going to pass viruses, right? So that's why 
that technically we have to work on the antivirus virtual machine. It's been going on for, for me for 20 years working on this issue. But secondly, why it's important business-wise? Let's say we have a virtual economy. You give me a token, I trade me for goods. Yeah. That's called economy. If you give me one token, a sw- and uh, sw- swap for another, yeah. it's not economy. It's like a euro for US dollars. The reason why you want to swap euros for US dollars, actually, you want to buy something from that market. Yeah, of course. It's not just for games, right? for, for, for fun. No one trading token uh, currency for, for fun. But then for the crypto world, basically they're trading tokens for <laughs> for whatever, right? Uh, they call it economy. I don't believe so. They call it a share value. I, I don't believe so. Sharing value only economy is a token for goods. And when you have so-called a value sh- uh, a swap, right? It's a tangible, tangible, non-tangible. If it's yeah. a tangible, you buy a phone, you buy a TV, and uh, those tangible assets, they are scarce. If you buy a phone. There's a one less phone on the market. But if I buy an ebook, what if you make a piracy copy of it? Okay. Right? If you make a piracy copy of the book, the book doesn't worth anything. I'm not going to waste my token on your book <laughs> or on your video, right? Right. So then, anti piracy actually is the base for smart economy. And uh, how do you do anti virus, anti piracy? Let's say, when you share value among the internet, uh, on the internet, you literally have to share code. Because if you share data, the data is interpreted by some program. Who is controlling that interpreter program, right? You cannot trust the interpreter. You cannot trust the media player by and large. You know, actually the media, and people, when people see piracy, who is the biggest, right? Uh, culprit for piracy. It's the software. It's the application. It's the software that creates the ability for you because to if do the, the piracy. Uh, it, no, the, the media player, but you know, in right. general purpose media player, right? If, if you have a doc opened up by, I, I wouldn't say word because that <laughs> affiliated with, with, associated with the company. But if you have some artwork, right? Uh, and then opened up by some, you know, editing software. Of course. And uh, could the art editing software send it somewhere? Ah. When I play your music, can it send it somewhere, right? Make a illegal copy of it. Yeah. And uh, so I mean, I'm not sure. Like, I mean, I'm not claiming, right? Those big corporations, they have some ethical uh, standards. But then, so many uh, apps out there, a lot of free apps, especially. Why they are free? They have to make a living. It's just by stealing your data for a living. That's I, what it is. I think it's a really good point, Ron. But it's really interesting to see where people are now. Do you think people are looking? for the next level, the next stage? Because a lot of people are very aware due to Cambridge Analytica that Facebook takes their data and sells it. Do you think a lot of people are like that passionate about it? Or do you because think they just don't know? They just don't know. Just don't know. As I said, you know, when I say, uh, a lot of, uh, how many people in this conference talking about smart economy, right? Everyone. But then if you talk about smart, smart economy, uh, you have to talk about trade. If you talk about trade, you have to use token to swap for goods, yeah. right? Which is re- really, really natural. But then when you talk about swapping non-tangible goods, and uh, how do you solve the piracy problem? If you don't solve the piracy problem, you don't have an economy, you don't have a trade. So basically, when you talk about uh, sharing a non-tangible uh, tangible goods, then the reason why you have to share code is because you cannot trust any other software from stealing from you, right? But then if, and also when you send, if I send you a mini program from, through uh, social networks, when you receive it, it's a customized code. So when you execute the code, you have to launch the virtual machine. Yeah. When you launch the virtual machine, that's the uh, single point of entry. Yeah. And that, because that virtual machine is open sourced from us, right? And everyone scrutinized the code. And also when the executable running inside, the virtual machine will check as against the blockchain. Do you still own, you have the right to play it. 
if you don't have the right to play it, then right, you're not going to play it. <laughs> so that's why when you share value, you share code. When you share code, you need a virtual machine OS. Yeah. And if you're not talking about virtual machine OS, and uh, it's not going to handle it. But then you see projects saying, oh, why don't we do web assembly? Right? Why don't we do, uh, when you do Java, Java has two flaws. One is uh, Java has a JNI. One is running the native code, yeah. the games, uh, the multimedia codecs. It gives you a backdoor as open as you know the truck can, can drive through. Because <laughs> basically everyone, every developer is able to use the backdoor called a JNI. Yeah. Java native call. Open to everyone. If the backdoor is open to everyone, you might as well don't have, don't, you don't need a backdoor. You just, just go through it. Yeah. Then basically you go down to Linux and launch DDoS attacks and steal other people's data as before. What, what do you see kind of the drawbacks of WebAssembly? Because WebAssembly basically saying, OK, we do uh, inside a browser have another built in virtual machine, so to speak. The thing is, if you steal other people's data, if, you know, application, as I said, application is really, really nasty right now. Literally, all applications has the potential to steal. You know, who are you going to trust? Because they can freely access the internet and send your data anywhere they want. The operating system doesn't care, right? If you, if the application opened up a uh, port, send it to, you know, wherever your website is, right? And who is to say no? No one. The application just basically gave you a green light wherever you want to go, right? So for web, web assembly, is that the same thing? Anything within web assembly, if I access a internet portal, do you let me? Oh. So basically, saying web assembly, that's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so popular, why do you think that is? Because they don't know better. Do you think it's just a level of people just don't understand? Correct. Basically, the rule number one is, no applications, no services, no IoT devices should access the internet at all. That's the principle. Wow. That's the guideline, right? If you let, I mean, application being the interaction between the consumer and the machine, yeah. right? That's called an app. And uh, services running in the background of a computer, yeah. right? Like a search, like, uh, you know, database, and, and there are some uh, background services, right? And the IoT devices being peripherals of a computer. If l you let them to go on to the broad internet, right? They can, let's say you got surveillance cameras in your home, you got smart speakers in your home. What if you let them- fridge. Whatever, right? <laughs> if, if they have the liberty to send anything anywhere, and then even the light bulb, so you turn it on and going through the, your, 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 your router, right? And send your, oh, oh, oh. if there's a light bulb, how do you know there's no built-in microphone in there? How do you know there's no built-in uh, cameras in there, right? right? There's no way, because there are some genuine brands of uh, light bulbs, which is legit. But then what if, uh, some people make a counterfeit. The counterfeit could be look more real than the real one. It's not that hard. And you can't authenticate that as well. No. That's why if you let people to go on, if you let the sensors or services or apps go on the internet, there's no way you can guarantee the security of the uh, like autonomous driving enterprise IoT. There's no guarantee whatsoever, right? So then, when I say um, no apps or services or IoT devices should access the internet, that's called uh, communication. It's orthogonal to communication. Let's see, you know, this um, Alan Turing. Yeah. Great British guy, right? <laughs> and uh, when he invented the Turing machine, yeah. and people are saying everything, all the computations are equivalent to Turing machine computation model. I bet, let's make a wild bet, there was no network when Turing uh, was alive. So that means, basically uh, given this uh, very, very, not a scientific proof, right? Just saying computation, if computation is equivalent to Turing machine, and Turing, when he was alive, there's no network, can we say computation has nothing to do with the communication? And, uh, but currently, if you look at uh, all the uh computations yeah. of today, they all directly access communication. That's one of the biggest mistakes um, the internet, 
because it was uh, too early invented. That's crazy. So how can people find out more information about Alastos? Where can they, they go? They don't have to. They just have to pay more attention to the progress of computer science. This uh, principle, right, was, uh, there are several things uh, applied. One is, uh, this is called uh, metadata-driven remoting. It's uh, called reflection-based uh, uh, programming. Was uh, in the late 80s, when I learned the term from some French guys, and uh, in New Orleans, a uh, Wupsla conference, second Wupsla conference in New Orleans, 1989. Some French guys sitting on the podium saying, you know, you Americans don't know how to program. I was shocked <laughs> in New Orleans, right? <laughs> Who do you think uh, the audience are? The <laughs> Americans American. believe. Yeah, the Americans believe they invented the operating systems. They invented all, almost all programming languages. And some French jerks are just saying, you guys don't know how to program, right? So I said, why? You know, I was uh, in the audience, and why? I'm saying, because you, know, you guys don't know what's reflection. You don't know what's reflection-based programming. Then I went back to library and uh, looked up the books. <laughs> <laughs> That's 1989, OK? That's how long ago. Wow. And then in 99, year 99, right? 20 years ago. Yeah. Then Microsoft designed uh, .NET. Why do you think Microsoft designed .NET, right? The other operating system called XP Windows 2000, uh, Windows 95, right? So those operating systems are device OS. Device OS meaning they care of only this machine. They don't care about anything you go beyond this machine. I don't care. Right. So they don't protect you from the network attacks. They protect the local security leaks of the machine, right? Right, so anything else coming into that machine? I don't care. Right? Cause, but then as the internet getting more popular, and of course, if you don't keep, when you design operating system, if, if you don't keep the, the network in mind, then you never get uh, security, um, safety guarantees, right? That's almost scary to think wrong. But, but let's see, why people, why Microsoft call it? And you that. were part of Microsoft, you were part, part of, of the team. team. I was part of that team. So why we want to design a network OS called .NET? Are we out of our mind? Of course, the project was not very successful, given the Windows Vista it was a failure, right? But on the other hand, the principle, we keep on reminding ourselves, when we design this network OS, we should not let any applications from sending network packets. So then we are much safer. That was the principle 20 years ago, not today. This is a pathetic world. Wow. Wow. So where it do we is. go from here? <laughs> Another thing. It must be something optimistic, Ron. Another thing is, so if you look at DOS, right? 20, yeah. 30 years ago, when we have a DOS, when we have a single machine, we don't have a network. Then you buy a software. You buy, you go out, buy a WordPerfect. And uh, you install on your PC. Yeah. And uh, whether the uh, uh, WordPerfect went under, if you still own the software, you, you could still run it. Right? right? So no third party could shut it down. Because you bought it. You bought it. And you installed it, and you know it's authentic. Right. We but then, if you, but if you look at today, Swap, you, you purchase the software. What if the companies went under, the website going with it? Then your app doesn't run. You see the difference? Yeah. If we're saying dApps, what's a dApp? Dapp meaning no one can shut it down. If no one can shut it down, if I buy the software, I can run it forever. Right? And, uh, but then, if you buy a crypto kitty, and uh, what if the company uh, going under, the website's, uh, uh, website shuts down, yeah. down, right? Do you still uh, have the kitty? You have, but can you still run it? You cannot. If you cannot run the kitty, am I going to buy from you? No. Forget it, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it means you're, you lost your value. So that means the crypto kitty is not a dApp. Can we have a crypto kitty that runs with or without that website. Yes. That's the key, right? That's, again, going back to the computation shouldn't be affected by whether the website's there or not. Rong, you've given us so much to think about today. I want to thank you for your time. And um, I'm going to link down all of the Elastos links, your Telegram and your website. Please, everyone, check it out. They've just launched their new website yeah, as well. I just uh, think, uh, yeah, I just hope those uh, uh, you know, investors, right, saying, oh, I invested into this great crypto project. And um, 
think about these issues, uh, really, really simple issues, like uh, what's the economy, what's the trade? Well, Rong, you know a lot about the issues because you've been part of, part of the issues since the 1980s. Like, if there's anyone that understands this, it would be you. And your, what your message is to check it out and do your own research. Well, yeah, in a way, it is. So we basically were saying that uh, everything has to go back to the drawing board, right? Because uh, the internet, the Unix, right, was invented in the 70s. And uh, both haven't changed much for the past uh, 40 some years. And is that <laughs> so time? it's time for a change. Is it time for a change? <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of people got 40 years, you know, the young kids, they're born, right? Right. <laughs> Later than that. So they think through their life, things never changed. And now I think it's time. It's time for a change. Yeah, well, thanks for coming on, Rong. Appreciate it as always. It's good to see you again. Yeah. Let's keep Thank rocking you. it. Yeah. April.